So we were a little pressed for time in class, and we didn't get to cover uh, really in any detail the soil crusting topic. So I wanted to just talk through this slide set with you uh, today uh, to make sure you're up to speed on this really important topic. Uh, soil crusting impacts uh, hydrology, impacts what happens with the water, it impacts uh, soil erosion, impacts agriculture. So lots of, lots of practical significance for this topic. First, I want you to know this definition of a soil crust. It's a thin, less permeable layer at the soil surface, which is characterized by higher bulk density, smaller pores, and lower hydraulic conductivity than the underlying soil. There are three mechanisms of crust formation that I want you to know. I want you to understand physical dispersion, chemical dispersion, and biological crusting. Now, uh, in prior class and in the reading, we've talked a lot about chemical dispersion and how that is, uh, can be enhanced uh, in situations where we have um, high sodium absorption ratio in the water and low electroconductivity or low total salt concentration in the water. Those, that combination of factors uh, can really uh, enhance chemical dispersion, swelling of clays uh, due to the increasing thickness of the diffuse double layer. So we've covered the chemical dispersion. But uh, let's talk a little bit more about other factors and, and how these crusts form. Uh, this slide I really like because of some actual data, and it's very fine scale data. On the x-axis, we have depth beneath the soil surface ranging from 0 to 20 millimeters. So this is all, all this data is collected uh, in the top inch, or really even mostly in the top half inch of soil. And you can see uh, for these uh, loamy sand on the top and a sandy loam on the bottom, this, when you have this crust, you have this region of very high bulk density near the surface, up to 1.9, in some cases, grams per centimeter cubed. So very, very high bulk density right close to the surface, and then dropping down to a more typical value around 1.4, 1.5, as you get about a half inch down into the soil. This, these photos are really nice. They show uh, what happens to a soil, in this case, a silty clay loam. Uh, when it receives a rainfall intensity of 42.5 millimeters per hour. That's just under 2 inches per hour. And A is the soil uh, before the rainfall. And B shows the soil after 10 minutes of rain. Panel C shows it after 25 minutes. And D shows it after 90 minutes. <laughs> so you can see uh, the soil can just completely get beat down uh, through the raindrop impact process. This is an example uh, of physical dispersion. The raindrops hitting the soil and uh, sort of pulverizing the soil and filling in the, the particles that are dislodged by the raindrops then uh, can fill in the pore space uh, of the soil. So this, of course, makes it quite hard for germination. So oftentimes uh, germination, emergence of plants, uh, can be restricted by the presence of a soil crust as shown in this photo. This looks like probably a corn uh, seedling trying to emerge through a soil crust. There, so that's physical dispersion. Earlier we talked about chemical dispersion, but there's also biological crusting. A biological crust is a community of organisms living at the surface of desert soils it includes things like cyanobacteria, green algae, microfungi, mosses, liverworts, and lichens, all kinds of uh, creatures uh, that can be found making uh, this crust on the desert soils. There's actually an organization, soilcrust.org, dedicated to these biological soil crusts, which are found typically in the desert. So this is a photo, and this uh, community of organisms on the surface is uh, shown here is, is the biological soil crust. So very, very interesting uh, ecosystem. This figure uh, helps you to understand how the soil crust can impact infiltration. 
This is still focusing on the biological soil crust. This is from a site or three sites in Israel. So on the y-axis we have the infiltration rate in millimeters per hour and you can see data for both crusted, so with the biological crust intact, and scalped. This is after the biological crust has been artificially removed. What these data show, you can see the black bar is always lower than the white bar, meaning that the biological soil crust is significantly reducing infiltration at these three sites. The same would be true for crusts that were formed by other mechanisms, such as physical or chemical dispersion. So this helps you to visualize the effects uh, of these crusts on hydrology. So I hope this uh, quick uh, run through, uh, this brief slide set has given you some appreciation, uh, understanding of what soil crusts are, how they form, and their practical significance.